show you how to put together a yard haunt from bits and pieces from around your own home. So this is my shade house. I've never used this before, but um, I could use that shelving space as somewhere to put magic potions or spooky pot plants. And the back part, I can remove the plastic sheeting and I can replace that with some white plastic sheeting or white cloth material and project images onto the back. Or I could use a spotlight or torch to cast shadows onto the back. Other things you could use from around the home could be garden ornaments like garden gnomes. You could paint spooky faces onto them and put them around places in your yard. An ordinary stick, you could just put that into a pot plant and put some lights on it. A gazebo, I use that as shade for my dog to protect his eyes. Halloween, I could use the roofing and the walls, put some petitions up and make a Halloween walkthrough with spooky surprises around the corners. An upside down pot can be used as a monument. I've done so with a pet monument for Kitty in a pet cemetery. This fern, I could decorate that with spooky bones or something else to hang overhead. And here's some Spanish moss. That stuff is fantastic. You can hang that on your trees and it looks very spooky, just like something you may see in the swamps in New Orleans. This pot, I decorate that by popping Audrey into it and that has a nice effect. I found this hat stand on the side of the road. Someone was throwing that out for council pickup. I brought it home, cleaned it up, and I turned it into a signpost. I used tomato cages for a lot of my characters, such as my twin ghosts, and my happy, friendly witch, and also cousin it, which I showed you a do-it-yourself video for. These garden stakes on the left, I use those to help support my fencing and my tombstones. A vegetable garden could be converted into a grave. These kitchen tiles left over from a renovation can decorate graves. This fencing, I use that to fence around my cemeteries. And the puppy pen at the back is used as a safety barrier around the street sign. You can also see some fencing rolled up at the back there. Okay, so I found this as a roll of wire on the side of the road. I've cut it up, I've pressed it into shape and I'm holding it together with little bits of twisted wire. That makes the base of my ghost lady. Underneath here, there's some leftover pavers from a landscaping job. I use those to decorate my cemetery graves and I use the palette underneath to help keep my projectors and other props stable and dry. So this is the ghost lady when she's finished and this is the cemetery decorated with the tiles and pavers. These are retaining wall blocks that are left over from a job. We use those to help stabilise the fencing and to put on some of our decorations. And the two lanterns there, they're old solar lights that don't work anymore. I put tea lights under them and they look good. I use this roll of wire as fencing. I originally bought that to stop my puppy from falling from high places. And this is my pet cemetery. It's one of the most popular exhibits in the Halloween haunt. Um, these pavers here, I put them in to help support the pet monuments. I have to make sure that they're all level so nothing topples over. And I make sure they're far enough back so that the kids can't touch them and knock them over. That little paver, that helps to mark out where one of the headstones goes for Matt the Bat. This is Lizzie Lizard, another garden ornament. I've just popped her under the rock there and I'll have a little plaque for her this year. Over here I'm going to plant some seedlings in front of the rock and on top of it I'll probably put a snake this year. I might make that out of a stocking. 
Over here is a meerkat that somebody has given me and I put that in my cemetery last year in the middle of all the plants popping up with two sticks from the garden held together with some string to make a cross. This urn, I found that on another roadside collection. I brought that home because it reminded me of something I saw at Disneyland's Pet Cemetery outside the Haunted Mansion. Uh, last year I put a headband in it with flashing on and off googly eyes. I asked the children what they thought it was in the pot and they all said it looked like a monster in the pot. So this year I think I might change it up a little bit. I was thinking of putting another plant in there, something that might be going to trail over the sides. If you do that, it can, you know, just anything hanging and looks more spooky, I think, in the dark. So I think I'll do that this year. So as I mentioned earlier, this is one of my favourite displays and the children really love it. This is what it looks like at night. This is another area that I decorate for Halloween. And down here we have two solar lights that no longer work. I put faces on them and put tea lights under them and they look great. This bird bath, I just uh, take the lid off it and I can use the pedestal to put a prop on there. This is where I hang that Spanish moss that I showed you earlier. I'm still building it up, but that will look really great in the night, I think, with some lights on it. I decorate these hedges with lights. And over here, that's where I put my glow-in-the-dark eyes. I've done a do-it-yourself video for that one. And this area here, I have another cemetery plot. You can see the neighbour's yard at the back. So what I do, I put some fencing across to finish it off and hang some lights on it. And in the garden here, I usually dig a grave in there and put some lights inside to make it look a bit more spooky. So that's what it looks like at night. And over here, that's where I put my street sign. And it's at the top of the driveway, so it catches everybody's eye when they're walking past. I decorate this area with spooky pot plants. And to the left, you can see a garden ornament. I made bandages out of a white rag by tearing it up and tying knots, wrapped it around, put on clip-on earrings for the eyes, and a muslin cloth as a shroud. And there you have a mummy. I put black lights into my electric lanterns, for want of a better word, and that illuminates all the colours. This is a cemetery plot here. This is where I put some of that extra garden fencing, and I've turned this area into a theatre, and that's what it looks like at night. And to the left, I've got more garden fencing. I put lights all along it to the end. And so with that on the left and the fencing lit up on the right, it creates a path and it leads people through to the area that you want to go, as you can see in this photo here. And as you can see in the background, you can see the neighbour's house. So from around about where that chair is, I have another fence that leads across to the left-hand side of the gate. And that helps to finish off this area as well. This path was made from a friend's leftover pavers. I use that to lead up towards my prop and then they go off into the distance behind them. These tables and chairs, I use that to either sit on or to set up my Madame Leota prop. So that's the end of the video. I'd like to thank you for visiting and I hope you got some good ideas out of it and I'd like to wish you a very happy Halloween. <laughs>